Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says the accusations leveled against him and the probe of former EFCC boards are false and unfounded. And in Ondo State, anti-impeachment lawmakers temporarily booted out. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeinde. Welcome back. In case you just join us, this is Plots Politics on Plots TV Africa. As the embattled acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, faces a probe over alleged diversion of recovered loot, an unconfirmed report accusing Vice President Yemi Oshibaju of collecting 4 billion naira from the suspended chairman broke out on social media yesterday. In response to this senior special assistant to the Vice President of Media and Publicity, Lao Lua Kondi, has stated that this is false. Is another person from the president camp about to meet the Waterloo? Joining us to discuss this is Dakbo Akinoshun, a legal practitioner, joining us via Zoom. Mr. Dakbo, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good to have you. And also joining us in this conversation is a member of PDP, Ola Dimeji <laughs> Fabi, who is also joining us uh, online. Good evening, uh, B. Thank you very much. Good evening. And good evening, viewers. Good. Good to have you, too. Okay, let me start with uh, uh, Mr. Kionshu. Uh, what do you make out of this? Is this another power play extending to the vice president or you feel, because ordinarily we see the vice president not responding to this kind of allegation, but he took his time to respond to this. What can you make out of this? Well, it, it is always good when a man has an opportunity to clarify or state his own side of issues. There are times when it is good to keep quiet, but there are times when it's also good to clarify issues Sometimes you say it is better to keep quiet, that silence is the best answer for a fool, it is said in normal parlance. But at the same time, when a lie is repeated often, people tend to begin to believe that lie. Uh, it is very good, it is important that at every opportunity you can clarify the issues and make it bare. The vice president has an opportunity to make his, himself heard and, clear, and clearly heard, and he has denied any any such thing, and I'm sure that from responses I've read, I've heard, and I've heard on social media, it is clear that most people do not believe that that kind of thing could happen. I mean, the allegation is so bare that there are no facts to support it. Somebody just comes and says, oh, um, he gave him four billion. And where from? How can? What did he do with it? What was it supposed to be? You don't just make an allegation without any facts. And it's very important that the man also clarified it and made it very clear that no, not, no such thing ever happened. Okay, I, I, I'll come back to you. Let me also listen to the opening remark of uh, Mr. Fabi. Uh, uh, what do you make out of this? We saw a release by some group in PDP describe, I mean, asking the vice president to resign. Uh, are you part of this uh, kind of call, being a member of PDP too? Well, thank you very much. Uh, first, I'd like to bring, I mean, take us back to memory lane. And uh, I think this is not the first time uh, the vice president will be accused of something like this. I remember a few months ago where there were this news about friction between him and his boss, and uh, there was, he, he, had, he was involved in something that has to do with the former chairman of FIRS. Lots of money were involved, campaign funds, and all that. And then at that time, he threatened the, the, the vice president threatened to take, you know, to take those who are involved in those allegations, those allegations to court. But suddenly, um, I, I think um, perhaps reason prevailed. He didn't do that. But now, uh, today, uh, just of recent again, we we just woke up to hear that the uh, that the, the acting 
chairman of the EFCC made such allegation. For me, as long as it has not been established, uh, I think uh, there isn't much you know, to be worried about. And again, I think the vice president has done what is good to write the uh, general of police to actually uh, run an investigation about this. At least, I mean, that is in a bit to clear his name. Uh, one thing I would like to say is that I don't know why, you know, because your question said whether we know or whether I know or I want to put that line that he should resign. And if he's culpable, there are so many ways with which he can recuse himself like, as, as what you have in law or excuse himself from, from, from office. But that's, I don't think we have got to that level now. A lot still needs to be done. The report of the people investigating, uh, the panel investigating, uh, acting chairman of the SEC, is not yet out. At the end of the day, we'll, 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 get, we'll get around all these things. But there's something I must say. PDP has no hands in it. APC had their issues. They've always had their issues. And this is one of such issues they are having. They should face their problems. They should face their wala and stop arrogating PDP to every problem that they have. I know that my party has no hands in whatever that is happening around the it's, it's an APC problem. And if you, the vice president is a member of the of the of the APC. I think they just manage their crisis and, and get done with, get I mean done with it. What we're asking them for is good governance. And what we're asking them for is accountability. What we're asking them for is to take Nigeria to that level we're supposed to be. Uh, for us as as a as a party, we are responsible to Nigeria and we'll continue to be responsible to Nigeria. Okay. Uh, before we go into another campaign. But let's look at this uh, uh, right of credited to, uh, according to the right of uh, Okafo. His name is Celestine Okafo. And he was talking about the pointblanknews.com that broke this story that um, this particular online platform was formed and it was created by the likes of uh, Doyo Kupe and they were being sponsored by PDP to churn out this kind of fake news. Uh, 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 do you have any response to that, that this is just a ha hashed job being done by the opposition where your party belongs? Uh, uh, I guess that question is for me. Yes, let me have your take on that. I, 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 I don't want to, um, I wouldn't agree to that because uh, like I said, uh, this is a purely APC affair, and PDP has nothing to do with this. I am still saying it that PDP has nothing to do with this. The, the, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are guidelines, I mean, run, I mean managing affairs of uh, you know, news and online uh, media and all whatnot. So for anybody to come out and say this, uh, the, the media that, 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 I mean, that, that made this news, or whether fake or not, is, uh, belongs to PDP. I don't believe that is fair enough. That is, I don't. I don't think that is fair enough on okay. the part of PDP. If okay. the president knows what we do not know, if you come out and say and say it as it is. But as far as I know, today Don Yokupe is no more in government to defend himself. And for this gentleman to have come out and say the newspaper or the online media work for PDP, I don't think that is right. Okay. When you go to PDP headquarters. You see all the correspondences of all correspondence of all the, new, the known newspapers and the media houses, both online, that registered with the with the party. So I don't know whether point blank. Okay, the major. I don't think and I don't begin. Let, to let me quickly let me take that question to Mr. Dakpo. Uh, basically, some would say that uh, the words of the vice president looks quite uh, mild and maybe not strong enough to send a serious warning against this online medium. In your own take, I'm sure you've gone through that uh, release. Do you think uh, the vice president has done enough to send a warning signal? And like he alluded, that this is not the first time the vice president threatens to take people to court. But he ended up not, uh, you know, taking it far. Well, I, I, as you would also remember at that time, when the accusation came out, the newspapers that carried the news made an apology. They tendered an apology unreservedly and said they had found out that the story was unfounded, that there were no facts in it. It was actually what Vanga, one of the newspapers that carried it, they had investigated and found that there was no factual basis for the allegation made by the person that carried the news. If the newspapers that made the allegation had retracted it, 
And don't forget that the person who made the accusation doesn't reside in Nigeria. He has been out of the since then. He hasn't been known to return to Nigeria at all. So there'll be nobody to go on ground, even if you need to go to court at that time. Because the people who made the allegation, who carried the story, apologize. Going to this one, what he has also done is, a, you see, because the story itself is very factually business. As even my colleague, has, as, uh, Mr. Fabi, has admitted that this story does not have any basis in law. The newspaper point, or the online reporter that carried the news, point blank news, have not been able to substantiate it. He is not even sure now who owns point blank news. The allegation that is out is that point blank news was built and sponsored by Mr. Dr. Donio Cooper. He says he doesn't know, and that is okay. I mean, he can't know everyone that owns the newspaper. If the ownership of the newspaper cannot come out and substantiate it, then there's but the VP has also cost a lawyer to write to the IG to investigate these allegations. I'm not sure there's much more he can do at this stage. He has denied it. The IG has been written to say, please investigate this, this um, report. And if anything is true in it, then let us take to the next step, as he has said. But right now, there's nothing much more to do than what he has said, that there's no truth in it, it's totally false, and he has no hand at any point in time, has there been anything like that? I think that is a clear enough um, refuter. When you say it is clear enough, we, we are looking at uh, different kinds of accusation. We recall what the EFCC chairman is going through now. It started off like this, and people said, oh, it is about power Tazu. And later on, we are seeing someone being suspended even when the investigation is ongoing. So what we are trying to look at is how fast should the vice president go to make sure that such things is not repeated? Because two of us can foretell that this might not be the end of this kind of tantrums and this kind of uh, uh, attack to ridicule his image publicly. You see, sadly, sadly as it is, um, People, you cannot stop people from just opening their mouths and saying what they choose to say. And being uh, and many people who have nothing to say and who are looking for publicity would attack a man of uh, credibility. There are some people that if you accuse them, it would not make any difference. You rightly said that, well, all this came, supposedly came from Magu. Nobody has heard uh, Mr. Magu himself say it. It is reported that they said he said. And there's not even, uh, even Magu, as you have rightly said, we have not even heard anything from him directly. They say he has been suspended. Well, th those are still reports that are unsubstantiated at this time. The presidency has not come out been suspended. We have not heard that officially yet, but everybody is so, I mean, I, and it just shows that even if it is being, even if it is being investigated, as is said in the news report, it shows that no. Okay. I, I think the network is a bit unfriendly. I'm sure that uh, it's going to get better as time goes on. Uh, let me take this conversation. Since two of you uh, seem to be on the same side when it comes to the credibility of this uh, storyline. Now, that brings us to another issue that uh, this current government has been battling with, which has to do with regulating the social media. Now, this story probably like we had with uh, Vanguard and the other paper that apologized when the other allegations were made against the vice president, we're looking at how can we practice responsible journalism like we have in the electronic, we have the NBC. We would definitely call anybody to order. And for the print, we have the MPAN. But this social media, uh, Mr. Fabi, is this not a good reason to take a look on how it can be regulated? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Sincerely, I, um, I, as much as I, 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 I love social media, um, this is one area that I, I have a very great concern, and I know many Nigerians do, do, do so too. Uh, but there's nothing bad if it can be regulated. 
uh, because um, social media, as we all know, has both both its, it has its advantages and disadvantages. So, uh, so for, for, for what government needs to do is okay. Let's look at other clients how this thing works. Where social media also where um, where they use social media too. Uh, let's look at some of the things they do there. Let's see which among those things they can work for us in Nigeria uh, because we have a peculiar situation. Uh, uh, sometimes we may not need to entirely copy and paste what they do there, but we just people of one or two that can work for us in Nigeria to ensure that all these things are streamlined. We have proper guidelines that will protect those both, both the practitioners and the people. For instance, like somebody like the vice president. So uh, I, I'm of the opinion that the government needs to do more. They need to hear from the people how this thing can be done, how we can make it better. Uh, because we cannot do without social media. It's, 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 it has become a phenomenon. It has become, it has come to stay. So, and if we agree that it has come to stay, then we must on our own as the people and as government put in place machineries that can make it work better for people and the practitioners. So this is my view on it. So we need regulations, but those regulations must be more, must must be in tandem with uh, uh, with all the uh, uh, I mean must be regulations that will make the, I mean that will protect both sides of the divide. That's okay. my take on that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Akion Shu. Uh, he has just read something very critical. By default, I can say that um, you're close to the corridors of power and you know the kind of uh, resistance that the people have given to any attempt to regulate the social media. But maybe I should also remind you that there are some advantages. We've had this social media platform, you know, damning the consequence, break the story that a lot of people in the presidential uh, uh, villa would not want to own up to. And at the end of the day, it turned out to be true. So how do we, you know, bridge this gap to make sure that social media is not killed, and at the same time, we don't have some kind of irresponsible journalism as this one turned out to be? As you have rightly observed, social media is a good tool for disseminating information. Sometimes good, many times bad. And it is bad news that always seems to travel quicker. Many times, the social media space is abused. You know there have been attempts to regulate it by the legislature. What this administration has done is leave it to the legislature to make because the administration, the executive is not to make the law, is the legislature. The legislature has attempted to make laws around it. And I do remember that when that happened, there was serious resistance even within the legislature. That law has not been passed till date. But I think in the practice of proper democracy, it is, that is what the legislature is there for. Look at what laws are necessary, and then they will amend laws to meet the growing needs of the society. Without a doubt, there is now time, there's now a need to start regulating social media. But there, I think this administration Hi. Okay, um, I think uh, we're so sorry. We may have to round up this discussion. Thank you to gentlemen who have actually thrown light. And it's okay that uh, this story is considered false. Uh, PDP member also agreed that it is false since nobody has been able to prove it and uh, authenticate it. But while we stay on this story, we want to say thank you to Mr. Dapo Akionshu, a legal practitioner who is some kind of a friend to the vice president. And we also appreciate Oladimeji um, Fabi for your time. Thank you for your time. We will take a short break. And when we come back, another win for Governor o is this another win for Governor Akiridulu of Ondo State as supporters of Ondo Deputy Governor get suspended? We'll be right back after the break. <laughs>